Usually people like to identify me by my professional title, Dr. Latrice Atkins, and I immediately shut them down. My first name is Latrice. I've spent the majority of my career teaching at the higher education level, hence the doctor, but I don't need the title in order to relate to others. And so people just call me Latrice, or if I can't convince them to do that, at least they'll call me Dr. Latrice. That's beautiful, Latrice. Let's start it like this. Uh, because we are going to be talking about history today, because I, I love history because it tells us where we are coming from. And also it gives us the context of even where we are right now. So uh, give me a little background of you growing up. Where were you born? Tell us something. Okay, my personal history begins in a community that we call sunny South Dallas. Dallas is a huge, sprawling uh, metroplex, but I spent the bulk of my formative years in a neighborhood called South Dallas, which literally just means south of downtown Dallas. Um, it was working class, working poor when I was growing up. And now it's more uh, lower class, lots of issues like homelessness, uh, rapid uh, drug addiction and that sort of thing. But my childhood was very insulated with love on all sides, love from my local Baptist church, love from the public school system and a very loving. Uh, matriarchal, matriarchal home, meaning that our home was centered around female figure as opposed to male figure. My mom, my grandma, uh, and my aunt grew up so close with my first cousins that they're basically like sisters and brothers. Grew up so closely with the kids at my church that we're still in contact and our kids know, you know, their kids. And so just um, to use an anecdote, I grew up on a bed of love. I, I grew up being loved and affirmed as a little black girl. I uh, never thought there was anything that I couldn't do that I set my mind to. Never thought there was any dream that I couldn't have. And so I went through school with a 4.0, basically graduated valedictorian with a 4.0, got an academic scholarship to Wellesley, uh, the world's premier women's uh, college, and met all kinds of women there, uh, competed uh, with them. Uh, and then eventually finished a master's and a doctorate in history from Michigan State. So very smart, nerdy kind of girl, Christian uh, background. But I think at the core uh, of who I am as a human is love. And I've learned uh, how to love people who are a lot like me and love people who are very different than I am because that foundation is there in just love. And if there's a human right I believe in, I believe in the human right that we're all entitled to unconditional love. So that kind of sums who I am. That's powerful, Latrice. That's powerful. Love is the biggest thing in the world. It's a, it's a kind of, uh, it's a rope that ties us together as a humanity, as, a, as one family. It is powerful. I, I love that. I love that. And I hope it should dominate the experience that we're going to be talking about today, looking at history. Because history is another important aspect of our life because it tells us where we are coming from. Um, now, my question, my curiosity actually is, how did you get into history? When I first began trying to think about my life as an adult, and I think a lot of kids started out this way, maybe by middle school, people start asking, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? And so I started out wanting to be a scientist. I love processes. I loved discovery. I love making things dirty and messy and then trying to figure out what was going to uh, happen next. My mom even bought me an uh, expensive chemistry set that we couldn't afford, obviously, because we were a single uh, parent household. But she made that investment and sacrifice. I also explored music. I played the flute for several years, about six or seven years within the marching band. I played the piano. And so if there is such a thing as a Renaissance woman, I was that. I love science. I love music. I love the art. I did junior theater. I did all of these things. And I make a joke, uh, Obehi, that one of the challenges of being someone who does a lot of things well is that it's really, really difficult sometimes to find your passion, to find that thing that you were sent on the earth to do, to find your purpose, because you do so many things well. And I had that problem of doing so many things well. And so by the time I got to high school and my teachers were seeing all of these skills and all of these talents, I was pulled in all these directions, president of the student government, uh, president of uh, Fugitives of America, just all of this stuff. 
And at some point I did feel a little overwhelmed because I couldn't answer the question, what do you want to be when you grow up in a single sentence? Because I was involved in so many activities. By the time I got to Wellesley, that feeling of being overwhelmed got to the point that I actually uh, sought out our counselor on campus was like, I don't even know how to pick a major. I feel so disempowered, everything coming at me and all of these possibilities and working with a professional therapist, I really began to figure out what it is that I most enjoy. All my life, people told me you would be a wonderful judge. You probably should go to the Supreme Court. You're very level-headed, very fair-minded, can take a lot of information and really see what needs to be done. And, and, and you speak so well, you definitely should be an attorney. And so I started taking pre-law at Wellesley and was most miserable. I didn't enjoy the classes. I didn't enjoy the reading. And I figured that if I was miserable in pre-law, how much more miserable would I be if I became an attorney? So that wasn't it. So I was in crisis. And the courses that I found the most relatable, the courses that brought me um, the most comfort in terms of quieting uh, that sense of being lost and overwhelmed were courses about our shared history. I'm presuming that you're also a person of African descent and, and learning about who we are uh, from the continent through the diaspora and all of the languages and all of the religions and all the different foods and just all the different ways that we uh, were acculturated uh, and then some of the ways where we were assimilated and then some of the ways where we were just completely resistant and we're going to stay very African no matter where we were or what language we spoke or what God they told us to serve fascinated me. And it is those stories of survival and resilience with regards to who we are as an African people that really captivated my heart. And then I spent the next 14 years studying those things. That's lovely. Who we are. I like that. Now, there are some people who do not understand the intricacies of the African-American history. They don't understand what, what has happened, what is happening. They don't understand it. Now, as a historian, how would you, what would you want somebody to know about African Americans? Okay. I, I would share at least three what we call theories about identity formation, how the group of people who identify as African American, and we're extremely diverse. I don't want to create a monolith like we're all alike because Black Southerners are not the same as Black Detroiters. Uh, but how we came to be. So I'll share three quick theories. Uh, R. Martin Delaney, R. Martin Delaney in the 19th century, he said that people of African descent who live in America are a nation within a nation. We're very African in the sense of our origin, but we're very American in the sense of our lived experience. But we're not fully American because of institutional racism, because of how the country evolved after defeating um, New, uh, England in um, the American Revolution. We held on to slavery. We made concessions for slavery. We didn't outlaw slavery outright. And we continue to make those concessions until the defeat of the South of the Civil War. And because of that, our Martin Delaney argues, we are a nation within a nation. W.E.B. Du Bois then came back and said, you know what, quite honestly, because of this phenomenon of having to exist as a people that is separate, unique, and distinct, but in a symbiotic relationship, meaning that we have some things in common that allow us to survive as Black Americans and that allow the country to grow even as they uh, feed off of us in certain kinds of ways, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois called that double consciousness, that at all times, people of African descent in the United States are conscious of the fact that we are different and not like the majority, but we definitely are no less American. So R. Martin Delaney says we're a nation within a nation. W.E.B. Du Bois says we have a dual or a double consciousness. And then uh, as we get out, get closer to where we are today in terms of the 21st century, we have all kinds of different movements that are attempting to define who we are. One of the most um, controversial is the Black Lives Matters movement, uh, kind of coming off of 
um, the murder of African people at the hands of people who are supposed to protect all life and all citizens, uh, a group of young people, millennials, were saying, no, we've got to make sure that people understand that our lives matter and are just as vulnerable and just as fragile as anyone else's life. And we need people to respect our humanity, right? And so understanding and wrapping your mind around the Black experience really does invoke all of these different ways of trying to explain how we've experienced life in the United States of America, from being a nation within a nation, to functioning as a human with a double conscious, to really realizing that there are targeted attacks on our humanity because of our lived experiences, and unequivocally declaring no, we are fully American, we are fully human, and we're entitled to all the rights, including protection, that all others are. And so understanding who we are as a people really does call for a historical uh, lens so that you can see these different identity formation theories and forces over time. Thank you so much for that. That's very important. If I, there is a lot uh, that is in there, and we're going to be unpacking it uh, of course, I'm not following it chronologically. I just want to pick the one that strikes me the more. 